The last thing we're going to look at is injury proofing yourself. Why? Because the best way that you can get to the next level is to be fit and available. If you're injured, you're not going to be selected. So it's important to get yourself in a state where you're avoiding injury and being available as much as you possibly can be. What do you think are the most common injuries? Again, these will differ from different sports, ages, and genders. But if you put them in an overall context, here are the seven most common sports injuries. Number one, the ankle sprain. Number two, the groin pull. Three, hamstring strain. Four, shin splints. Five, ACL. Six, six patellofemoral syndrome. And seven, tennis elbow. We're going to focus on the top three. Before we do, here's some more statistics for us. So who gets injured most and where, male to female? So we can see on the left here, males have two times more hip and groin injuries. Females have two times more quadriceps injuries. Males have two times more hamstring injuries. And the one that stands out is the ACL rupture, with three to five times more females having an ACL incident than males. Okay. Finally, slightly higher ankle sprain incidents with females. So it's really important we're starting to plan our training, that we think about this kind of stuff. If we're male or female, we might want to target our exercises to help avoid these kind of issues. The final thing we look at is the ACL rupture. So as we can see, this is male to female, male in blue, female is orange. As you get older, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, if you're a female, you reach a stage during 10th and 11th grade when your likelihood to have an ACL rupture skyrockets compared to males. There's again lots of different factors for this, but it's just really important. We're going to have a bit more of a look later to avoid this if you can. Because an ACL rupture is a minimum of 12 months out of the sport. Okay, so how do we avoid this? How do we injury proof ourselves? We have this idea called prehabilitation. So if you've ever been injured, you'll probably go to a physio and they'll prescribe you some exercises. That's called rehabilitation. So once the injury is done, we want to rehab back to full strength. So the whole idea of prehabilitation is to avoid that in the first place. So prehab reduces the likelihood of injury, increases our strength. We want to increase our range of movement. We'll start with ankles and knees because they are related. So we're going to test your ankle strength in a moment. Pause the video, stand up like this. This is the stalk stand stance. So the sole of one foot is on the other knee with our knee bent. Our hands are on our hips. And when the timer starts, you want to lift your heel off the ground. Now, if you can't get to 10 seconds, you have a fairly weak ankle. So we might want to improve that. So pause the video, get a timer, get into this position and see how you go. All right, did you get 10 seconds? If not, pay attention. This is how we want to reduce the injury risk of our ankles. We want to practice balancing on one foot every day. As soon as we do that, we are less stable and our muscles, ligaments, tendons, everything have to work a bit harder to maintain our upright position. This is good. When we're doing this, we want to start easy. We want to increase the time and the difficulty. So for example, we might stand on our left foot for 10 seconds without falling over. And we might go to our right. Next time, we might go for 20 seconds. Then we might start thinking about doing things like closing our eyes, lifting our heel off the ground, moving our arms around to test our balance. Again, we want to progressively make it harder over time. One really good strategy is while you're brushing your teeth, two minutes in the morning, two minutes at night, just stand on one foot. This will help really test that balance, improve that over time. All right, moving on to our groin injuries. So we have an exercise called the Copenhagen plank. Now this reduces groin injury by 41%. This is huge. You're nearly halving your risk of injuries by including these in your program. So let's have a look at what it actually is. All right, guys, coming at you from uh, Stock Game Practice, working with a lot of our guys. Um, so basically, we're talking about Copenhagen planks today. Copenhagen planks are great for adductor strength, and I'll let Matt here do a handful. He can do about five, then he can take a break. This is like. All right. So, really important we do this in pairs. You might want to do this in your warm up or your cool down or your workout during the week. 
but you only need a couple of these per session to reap the benefits. Now, really important that you are maintaining your body in that upright stance. You don't want to be leaning forward or leaning back. You want to be nice and vertical. And you want to really work that adductor or groin. You'll feel this one. Once you do it a few times, once you do it consistently, it will become easier and easier as you get stronger and stronger. And finally, we look at the hamstrings. Again, in a moment, pause the video. See if you can touch your toes without bending your knees, without bending your back. Pause the video, test yourself out now. How did you go? If you cannot touch your toes, which is the case with so many athletes, you really need to work on your flexibility. We're gonna have a look at a couple of exercises to help us reduce our injury risk as by strengthening and stretching. So we're gonna increase our strength by doing Nordic curls, and we're gonna increase our range of motion by doing PNF. First of all, Nordics. Now this is amazing, six to eight repetitions of Nordic curls per week, not per day, per week, reduces risk of a hamstring injury by 51%. This is what a Nordic curl is. So again, this is in partners. Someone's on their heels, holding their weight. You wanna lower yourself down, keeping your whole body straight. So get as low as you can. And if you're unbelievably strong like this guy, you can get back up as well. That's a Nordic curl, really important. Again, put it into your warm up, cool down, or workouts. Finally, we're gonna look at PNF. It stands for Proprioceptive Neuromuscular Facilitation. Here's a demonstration of how it works. This is a PNF contract relax for the hamstring muscles. What I'm gonna have Craig do is contract his hamstring into my shoulder for a couple seconds and then relax. And we're gonna repeat this a couple times. On the last rep, I'm gonna have him contract his antagonist muscle, the quadriceps. So again, good demonstration there. Really simple, you can do this with basically any muscle. The hamstrings work particularly well. Again, we're gonna do this in partners. One partner is gonna push against their partner's shoulder, try to dig that calf into the shoulder for roughly five or 10 seconds, then they're gonna relax. Their partner's gonna push slightly, so they'll be able to go a little bit further than they could before. Repeat that one or two more times, okay, and you should be able to increase your range of motion. Really important that you do this after a workout, after a training, and after games. Do not do it before.